says he should sue the UFC. Woo! Tony Ferguson, until just recently, has been ranked in the top 10 for his entire career. I mean, as far back as you can remember Tony Ferguson being a 55 pounder, he's been ranked in the, in the top 10 until he just lost that fight to Bobby Green. And the point on that is, Bobby Green was his sixth loss in a row. His sixth loss in a row, but he was still ranked in the top 10. He lost five fights in a row, he's still in the top 10. I'm just speaking to the caliber opponent that he's taken on. Tony Ferguson is the one that gave Justin Gaethje an opportunity. Tony Ferguson is the one that created Charles Oliveira. I mean, no, no part of the Charles Oliveira story, getting to main events and getting to championship opportunities, no part of that exists without Tony Ferguson. So, I know what I'm looking at as much as you guys do, right? You, you, you can see when a guy's time is past, but you're still juxtaposing that against a guy's time who's never arrived. Patty the Batty has, has never arrived. It's a matter that Tony just slid out of the top 10. Patty the Batty's never been in the top 10. Never even threatened to be in the top 10. When Tony Ferguson left the top 10, it was very arguable. Does a loss to Bobby Green mean that you're no longer in the top 10? Patty has not done anything to ever argue that he could be in the top 10. I'm not giving Patty a hard time, by the way. I look at it very, very differently. I look at Patty with some real positivity, but I also look at a guy that can't get his weight under control. I look at a guy that every time he goes on social media or Instagram or does some kind of a podcast with Barstool, the only comments have to do with how big he is, which is a direct contradiction to discipline and efforts being put into the gym. They don't go together. If you're doing the workouts, you're burning the calories. If you're not doing the workouts, you're not burning the calories, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's a very specific thing that you're looking at. One guy just exited the top 10. That's true. That just happened, though. Another guy has never even threatened to be in the top 10. One guy is on a losing skid. That's true. Another guy openly said, I'm not even tough enough to walk out there. I mean, it's been a good year. Somewhere right along those lines. I mean, we're, we are pulling up on a year since the Gordon fight. And whatever the injury was, it, it really doesn't make a bit of difference. If a guy says, I can't even go out there. I can't even walk out and try. I don't quite know how you're giving him a nudge over a guy that just left the top 10. And I haven't seen Tony have a big problem unless a guy was able to get on top of him and or stop his takedown. Right? Well, one thing when Tony did start to slow down, he started shooting a lot less. Now he starts trading a lot more. Even Tony in his best of times was very, very hittable. He would hit you back, he would kick you back, he'd move at weird angles, eventually he would change elevation, come underneath, get you to the ground, and then that would change everything. Even when guys would get back up, they now have to deal with the threat of the takedown. The threat of the takedown is much more damning and daunting than the takedown itself. The takedown itself is this peaceful, glideful thing where you get brought down to the canvas. The threat of the takedown. And I, I just say that because when Tony quit wrestling and or started getting out-wrestled, that's where the real problem was. I don't, I don't know that I see that with Patty. I do see some positives with Patty. I do understand that level of conditioning. I do understand that. that, that Fight fans, welcome back to Luxury Tainment. In this video, we'll take a closer look between the upcoming fight between Tony Ferguson versus Paddy the Baddy Pimblets.
Tony Ferguson, with 26 wins, 9 losses, will look to snap his 6 fight losing streak when he takes on Pimlet, who has 20 wins and 3 losses at UFC 296, December the 16th at T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. During his 6 fight losing streak, Ferguson has been finished in his past three by Bobby Green, Nate Diaz and Michael Chandler, with the remaining losses coming to Benil Darouche, Charles Oliveira and Justin Gagey. Ferguson was able to stun Gagey with an uppercut and drop Chandler, so we wonder if he'll be able to pull off a big moment against Pimlet and get his hand raised. Imagine what happens for Tony Ferguson if he beats Paddy Pimlet. Tony Ferguson told Luxurytainment, I'll beat him and I'm aiming for the title. So it's not like he has lost that desire to fight. He has not lost that thought that he can be a world champion. I'm going to tell you this right now and this is the saying as old as time. Every great champion has one more night in him. We saw it with George Foreman when he beat Michael Mora. He did not belong in the ring with Michael Mora. We have seen so many great fighters have one great night where if you close your eyes and you squint enough, they remind you of that person that was on that run. Tony Ferguson was very good and the way he would hit these guys, they would look like they were hit by a truck. I think he lost something in the Justin Gagey fight middle of a pandemic, no people in the arena, fighting Justin Gagey for five rounds and getting beat up for as long as that took. I thought he lost something in that fight and he just never looked the same afterwards. But not many people don't lose something when they fight Justin Gagey. That's what happens. Justin Gagey takes a little part of you that you don't get back. So I don't think you can blame Tony Ferguson for that. Tony Ferguson and the baddie are set to clash this December, slated for UFC 296 later this year. It marks a crucial moment in Tony Ferguson's career as he's looking to avoid a seventh consecutive loss. On the flip side, Paddy Pimlet enters the octagon with a cloud of controversy following his recent victory over Jared Gordon. Since the fight announcement, Paddy Pimlet has emerged as the betting favourite, raising concerns among fans about Tony Ferguson's prospects. However, there's a compelling case to be made for the former interim champion. In my view, the booking for this fight is intriguing. The heavyweight division's perspective suggests that Paddy Pimlet doesn't necessarily outshine Tony Ferguson in striking or grappling skills. Coupled with Tony's challenging recent schedule, there's a sense of hope for his chances at UFC 296. One can't help but think, finally, Tony gets a winnable fight. It's not an easy bout by any means. But when you look at Tony's last seven opponents, the toughness of his competition becomes apparent. From Bobby Green to Nate Diaz, Michael Chandler to Benil Darouche, Charles Oliveira to Justin Gagey, it's an intimidating lineup. Before that, it was a roster featuring the likes of Donald Cerrone, Anthony Pettis, Kevin Lee, and Rafael Dos Anjos. It's essential to consider the caliber of fighters he's been up against.
Now the burning question remains, did Paddy Pimlet truly win his last fight? Many fans hold doubts. Some argue that he might have faced a loss against Jared Gordon. If we delve deeper into his record, aside from Jordan Lievet and Rodrigo Vargas, who he defeated impressively, Paddy has shown vulnerabilities. He's been hit in those bouts, prompting us to ponder what aspect of MMA Paddy Pimlet truly excels in compared to Tony Ferguson. Is it striking? No. Is it grappling? No. I'm not outright predicting Tony Ferguson as the victor here, but what I am asserting is that this fight isn't as lopsided as it may seem. shooting a lot less now he starts trading a lot more even tony in his best of times was very very hittable he would hit you back he would kick you back he'd move at weird angles eventually he would change elevation come underneath get you to the ground and then that would change everything even when guys would get back up they now have to deal with the threat of the takedown the threat of the takedown is much more damning and daunting than the takedown itself. The takedown itself is this peaceful, glideful thing where you get brought down to the canvas. The threat of the takedown. And I, I just say that because when Tony quit wrestling and or started getting out wrestled, that's where the real problem was. I don't, I don't know that I see that with Patty. I do see some positives with Patty. I do understand that level of conditioning. I do understand that 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 great cardio as a byproduct of weighing 900 pounds and having to get down to 155 i do understand that there's a lot of runs involved there there's a lot of lung capacity there but you've also got to understand a guy being on a skid while being active is a much better situation than a guy sitting out period a guy in the gym training however it you agree with it or you disagree with it, then walking out to competition after having weigh-ins, after having travels, after dealing with those nerves and emotions versus a guy who's done nothing that involves exercise for one year. I mean, this this isn't like a hard bet. It's, it's a unique position. And... The one thing I don't like about the position is I do think that Tony is going to be Patty the Batty. And then that's going to buy him right into three more losses in a row. It does need to be a situation where if Tony wins, thank you and goodbye. If Tony loses, thank you and goodbye. I think that would make everybody have a little bit more ease with this. But make believing that Tony Ferguson, who just left the top 10, is going to get the jump put on him by a guy who's been sitting out a year, never claimed close, never never even remarkably close, not even in the most corrupt ranking system on earth was he even considered for top 10 status. I think you need to keep that in mind.
So guys, who do you have winning between Tony Ferguson versus Paddy Pimlet? Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and comment and have a great day.